Good morning, everybody. I hope your uh, morning classes have all gone super well for you today. I hope uh, you learned a lot in your other classes, and I hope you're ready to learn some more of this class. Now, uh, I do apologize. We have the mowers outside today. Um, they just happen to be right outside our window during our class period, so uh, we are going to deal with some noise that we're going to hear. So I'm going to try to speak louder and clearer for all you guys, and I um, hope you guys can do the same for me so we can understand each other and, and always remember that... Uh, no matter what, just, just holler if you need anything, raise your hand if you have a question. If you need something repeated, anything like that, um, I'd be glad to help and repeat myself because I know this is, a, this is pretty hard. Um, don't let me forget, guys, just to, to make sure that I'm talking clearly. So, again, if you have any problems, let me know, um, and I'll get those fixed for you. But with that being said, uh, we're going to get into some more trigonometry today. So at this time, I ask you guys, put your phone up and get your notes out, and we'll get ready for a good class. Uh, does anybody have any questions before we start? All right, well, uh, again, I just also wanted to congratulate the, uh, the baseball team on their big win last night. Um, that's good, but uh, as of right now, does anybody have any questions again? All right, well, if not, we'll get right into it. So last week, we learned how to, we learned how to find, the, to find a, a certain side of a right triangle given the angle and one side, not two. So... For example, if I gave you a right triangle with the angle of 36.9 degrees and the hypotenuse of 5, we would be able to find either, either of these sides given those using our acronym. Does anybody remember it? Can anybody tell me? Yes, ma'am? Yes, it is SOKATOA. Awesome. Um, like I said, you guys are going to remember that. That's extremely important. You're going to remember that for the rest of your lives if you ingrain it in your mind now, um, and it'll definitely help you in the future. Um, but again, like I said, we given that I give you any angle of any number and any side of any number, we can calculate the uh, the angle or the other side, any of the other sides that we want to, given just that I gave you one of those angles. So today we will be figuring out. So what if I gave you two sides and no angle. So if I left this as angle theta and gave you this. Now does anybody off the top of their head know how to find what that angle is? Yeah, we definitely could use our Pythagorean theorem and figure out what this side is and then use our, uh, our, raw, our rule of proportions with um, this being 90 degrees we could figure out a rule to figure out what the ratio of the sides would be, but that, that, is, incorrect, that is absolutely correct, but um, we have a much easier way to do it on our calculators, and this will be a completely new concept to you guys, but it will be the inverse function, so we could use inverse sine, inverse cosine, or inverse tangent. Um, now, some of you may ask, what is inverse tangent? What does that mean? So, as we learned through our acronym, our sine is equal to our opposite side over our hypotenuse, the, the um, volumes of those sides, so 3 over 4 or whatever the number may be. Um, but for example, sine, sine inverse looks like this, sine to the negative 1 power of any angle theta. Now, a negative 1 power, we never, we never deal with those. How do you do those? Well, all a negative 1 power means is to put 1 over what you're trying to find. So it's just to put this function underneath 1. So to always think a negative means under 0, so negative 1 would mean under 1, you know, um, in that context. Um, but again, what that means is 1 over the function. So for example, if I gave you a triangle, we'll only do one of each because I know this mower is extremely loud and obnoxious, um, and I apologize for that. Um, hopefully we'll be able to dive into it in some more depth next period when they're not mowing. But if you had a right triangle with the angle theta and I gave you the sine, the sides, the hypotenuse of 5 and the opposite side of 3, 
Now, just, just solely based off of that and our acronym, uh, if I give you the opposite in hypotenuse, does anybody know what, what function we would use? Yes, sir. Yes, it would be sine. It would be sine. Um, am I talking loud enough, guys? Awesome, awesome. Well, if, again, if you have any problems, let me know. Um, but again, we would use sine. But to find this angle, instead of, we're f instead of finding a side given the angle, we're going to use inverse sine. Sine negative 1 of theta is equal to our opposite over our hypotenuse, which is 3 over 5. Now again, how do we solve for this? Now, next class we will go into how do you solve it without a calculator. But um, luckily our calculators have cool little functions on them that we can just plug in just using a couple of keys and simply find this out. So algebraically, to solve for theta, what exactly what would, what would we do? Yes, ma'am? Yeah, absolutely. We would divide by sine, and that's exactly what negative 1 means, the negative 1 power. Like I told you, it means 1 over sine, so we're putting this over the sine. So instead of actually doing that, we're simply going to use our calculator functions. So again... If we were to solve for this, it would look like theta is equal to sine to the negative 1 power of 3 over 5. Now, can anybody put this in their calculator and show me and tell me what, what the answer is? Now, again, to use that, you would just hit second function and then your sine button. And right above it in blue letters, you'll see sine of negative 1. Now you type in sine negative 1 of 3 divided by 5, and you get theta equals 36.9 degrees. So we automatically know what that angle is, just given two sides and the fact that it is a right triangle. Everybody good with that? Awesome. We'll do two more examples with cosine and tangent, and then we'll, be, we'll cut it short for the day. You guys have worked hard all week. I'm extremely proud of you, so um, I'll reward you by giving you some time to do any other homework or some homework that you might have missed. So I'm gonna key, I'm gonna continue to give you the hypotenuse of five, and if I gave you the adjacent side of four, again you're using your hypotenuse and your adjacent side. So using our acronyms, we would use Cosine, absolutely. So again, since we're finding our angle, we're going to use the inverse. So the cosine of negative 1, theta, is equal to our adjacent divided by our hypotenuse. So 4 over 5. Is everybody clear with that? I think we all have a good grasp on that based on our conversations over last week. Uh, but again, to solve algebraically for theta, it's going to look like cosine to the negative 1, which is just inverse cosine of 4 fifths. Now again, all we have to do is plug that in our calculator. So you hit your second cosine function, and you're going to get cosine to the negative 1, which is inverse cosine. And again, we're just going to simply put this fraction in. So 4 divided by 5. And again, we're solving for this same angle, just using different... I'm trying to show you guys something. Um, doesn't matter what side or angle that you're given, as long as you use the right trigonometric identity, um, you will get the exact same theta. So theta again equals 36.9 degrees. And we figured that out using two different sides rather than the sine function. So we'll wrap it up by giving an example of the tangent inverse. So if I took away our hypotenuse value, and I only gave you the adjacent and the opposite sides, again, using our SOHCAHTOA, we will use tangent. So tangent inverse to find the angle is equal to, or of theta, sorry, is equal to our opposite side divided by our adjacent side. 
And again, algebraically solvent. Can anybody tell me how to solve algebraically for theta? Yes, sir. Yeah, it's tangent inverse, inverse of three over four. And what do we have to do to calculate that without doing it by hand and showing a lot of work? Yeah, we just type it in our calculator. It's pretty simple. Um, we typically always have our calculators available to us. So I'm gonna introduce the easy way to do it really quick before we do it by hand. So again, our tangent inverse of three over four is equal to the exact same angle of 36.9 degrees. Now does anybody have any questions with that? I know it's, I kind of sped through and introduced a new topic. Um, so I don't expect you guys to fully grasp it just yet, but does anybody have any questions with the way I just um, introduced that to you? Did everybody hear me clearly? Is there anything that I need to be repeated? All right, awesome. Um, well, if you guys, do you guys have any questions? Okay, well, if not, that's awesome. Um, again, I'm sorry that we got interrupted by the mowers today. Um, that I didn't intend for that to happen at all. Um, but again, like I said, you guys have been awesome this week. So um, if you have any questions, just come up to my desk where I'll be and, and I can help you uh, figure out anything with this new topic. Um, if not, you're more than welcome to sit at your desk and get your phones out or work on your other homework. Just make sure you're doing it quietly and not disturbing anybody who may be trying to do something productive. Um, but other than that, next week we will learn how to exactly calculate this without our calculators. So again, we would use our 1 over our sine of theta or cosine or tangent, whatever you guys think. But that's what we'll get into next week. Um, I hope you guys learned how to solve basic basic angles given two sides today. Thank you guys, uh, you guys have a good day and just be quiet and uh, um, come up to my desk if you need anything.